As an undergraduate, you might be very interested in research. You see this professor in class talking about their work. You hear about various lab breakthrough in the news and have read some research paper. You feel like you want to be a part of this. However, you do not know how to start doing research. In this video, I'll show you the process I used to get into three different labs during my undergrad. You'll see, it's actually pretty simple and any motivated student can do it. For those that are new to the channel, I'm Yassine, a public researcher and machine learning practitioner who love to teach. Before starting though, let's go through the pros and cons of doing research in undergrad. And disclaimer, you should not blindly emulate what I did. I, I was a bit intense during my undergrad and I absolutely loved research to a ridiculous degree. So let's start with the pros. First off, you gain real practical knowledge that is very hard to get with coursework. This will make your knowledge about your field of study vastly superior than your peers. You contributed to the literal edge of science in your field of choice. This in and of itself is a lifetime achievement. Research is lots of teamwork, so it will allow you to network with very smart people that will go on and do very cool thing in the future. That's super useful. And finally, doing research will vastly increase your confidence in your own ability. If you work through any hard research problem, you gain this can-do attitude, which is difficult to foster, especially in industry. There are massive cons though, that you have to be aware. So research is very time consuming. There is no end no real guardrail against dead end problem and no one will tell you when the time is up if you aren't careful it will eat up your life the uncertainty is extremely disorienting at first sometimes something doesn't work out maybe no one in your lab know why and you just have to try again but after some repetition through the research motion you will start to expect the uncertainty and you ease into it and don't expect to be paid much also it depends on your lab but most lab won't pay volunteers if you manage to get an internship though it can bring you an okay pay and the awards also look kind of good on your resume. Suddenly you might get disillusioned about research, especially if you get into a bad lab. Some of the labs are very toxic, even though they produce lots of great research. There is multiple factors as to why, but I will advise you to get into a lab with a nice vibe. It's better for the long term. Also, you might get papers out of it, uh, but I would say that that's a bonus uh, as you don't have much control over that. With all that being said, let's get started. The first step is to define how much time you want to allocate to research and what skills you want to learn. Assessing how much time you can spend doing research is important because if, for example, it's your first semester of engineering, it's literally not a good time to add research on your plate. Give yourself some space so that you can experience research fully. Also, make sure that you know very well what kind of skill set you want to get out of the lab you will join. This way, you'll be able to train yourself with useful skills at the same time, which makes it all the more motivating. There are generally two ways of defining the skills you want to build for yourself. You can base the skills you want from your dream job that you aspire to, or you can base it on where your curiosity is pulling you the strongest. I'm very biased here, but I would recommend following your curiosity versus something that uh, a job requires. The best research I've ever seen had this raw element of curiosity driving the whole motion. It's like uh, gravity pulling the researcher toward the solution. So this innate human quality of curiosity is something you kind of need to listen to to do good research. The next step is to shortlist the lab that matches the skills you want to learn. To find a lab that matches these is pretty simple. First, you need to go into your university lab directory. I will show you the process in a minute. Then you look at the broad categories of lab and note down those that will help you build the skill you want. Shortlist the lab that matches the best your ideal learning environment. So wet lab, dry lab, or field lab. And then you select the top five in that list and spend a few weeks reading the research. So let's take a look at how I ran that process at my local university. Here's how I would do uh, my um, shortlist. First, I would look at the different faculty that there is in the university. And usually like if you're already an undergrad, you kind of know already where you want to go, at least the, the, like, the cross section of the field of study you're, you're interested in. And then you start with the top level categories. Let's say I was interested in engineering, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm really into machine learning. So here we're in the SIM research lab, so Center for Intelligent Machine. And we can start to see that there's a bunch of lab over here, some in robotics. Okay, I'm interested in robotics, system and control, graphic and human computer interaction. Nice, 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 computer vision. At this point, let's say I'm interested in computer vision. Um, I have Mick, Michael Langer, I had him as a professor, really smart dude. I could uh, take a look at this one. Uh, Frank Ferry here, also smart dude. Take a look at this one. At this point, like you're gonna get into the researchers website, which for some of them date back from a while. Uh, and then you can start to read their paper. 
another one over here. You can take a look at the publication and try to take a look at the earliest one. And then you can also take a look, at, let's say a research gate or a Google Scholar to see like which one has the highest score. And you read a few just to get the, the gist of uh, what are they doing and if it's interesting for you. Now that you have a short list of labs that interest you, it's time to contact them. Draft an email that is promoting your strength and your interest in the lab and send it out. Try to be as genuine as possible here and don't undersell yourself or your ambition. PIs are mostly looking for motivated individual here, not necessarily the one that already have a skill set. For some, it might look a bit uncomfortable to do these cold email, but uh, challenge yourself to write at least five of them. The worst that can happen is that you just get ignored. In my case, I got ignored by only two labs. One of them, sadly, the supervisor had cancer. So um, he actually never saw my email. And the second one reached back to me two months after I sent the email uh, with a positive response. So, but I was already engaged with uh, another lab. So let's check out like three email exchange I made way back that got me to three very interesting research lab, but also very different. Right, so this one over there was the very first one that I've ever done. I connected on Facebook with Dana Kafa, uh, which was doing like really cool stuff. And I read her thing and what the lab was doing and I was interested so I asked like hey like uh, I would like to volunteer and then do the work and I had a meeting with uh, the woman and I had at this point no skills at all so then I the Mathieu brother over here her PI messaged me and she was our PhD student said there you seen a few weeks ago you met with uh, Diana my PhD student she was looking for a volunteering a volunteer to work on one of her project if you're still interested we might need your help to help one of my other students for his project and will be easy recording just let me know if you're interested and we could meet shortly. Then I responded, I'm very interested. Thank you very much. I told them still that I'm not familiar with EEG, but this is the skills I wanted to learn. Like you see here, I'm not familiar with EEG recording. I'll be treated to learn all about it. Then I just uh, set up a time to meet. And I went there at the Douglas and I uh, chatted with them and it was a good vibe for a lab. And I just started there. So then the second one I did here, um, I was looking for an internship uh, during uh, the summer um, in 2016. It was after the first lab. So I already had some lab experience, like research experience in general, but not like wet lab experience. And I wanted to have wet lab experience because I was studying neuroscience, like the cells. I wanted to like and research like memory at the molecular level. I was really into that. Um, so I looked at a few of them and I found Dr. Sassen and his lab is absolutely incredible, the work they're doing with memory. So I, I was really upfront. I was like, hey, good morning. This is a cold email. I'm currently looking for acquiring lab experience in neuroscience and the technique used in your work are exactly the type I want to learn. You see how I opened this up with what I want from the lab and that I want to have like a research experience with you. Uh, don't forget, like most of these folks are also teachers. The best one, the best researcher, they kind of are doing this uh, research stuff, but they know that if they found a motivated student, it will be amazing and they can be do like so many great things. My YouTube uh, neuroscience student, but the problem is I don't have that much lab experience. I was planning on doing independent research next year, but I wanted first to get the general field, what could be done in the field. I'm currently volunteering at the Douglas Mental Health Institute under Dr. Brother, but during the summer, I was planning on doing more biological centered lab research. If there is a position that's available to your lab, I would be glad to fill it. Short and sweet. And then the thread was good. He said, hey, send me your CV, send the CV. There you go. And then uh, you can see the CV. You can see over here my, my kind of grade. Um, I was a good student, so A's and stuff, some A minuses. Um, yeah, it did, it did look, um, Kind of good. He asked me that because he, he thought he could get me a grant, um, which will help him pay me during the summer. Okay, and finally, this is the last one um, I've done. And I work with other lab as collaborator, but this one is the lab that I was like, yes, this is the one I want. It was an awesome lab. I was doing my master there, my PhD before I dropped out. But uh, her work was like one of the most stimulating experience of my life, literally. So I was looking at a, a lab that is was more, that was still doing EG stuff, but more on the quantitative side. Like the first one I did was more on the psychiatry side, which was awesome. But this one was more, like more quantitative and I wanted a bit of that because I was doing a lot of computer science stuff. So here's what I said. Good morning, Dr. Moraes. She didn't knew me. I'm a third year neuroscience student at McGill and I'm interested in the kind of research that are happening in your lab. I like how your research are aimed at using technology to break the isolation of impaired individual something I was very fascinated about. 
I was wondering if there was a spot available at your lab for an undergraduate research assistant. I will be entering my final year and I really wanted to do a year long project. Um, so some of the course you can do that. You can have like these, uh, these projects. So I leverage that out and I give my CV, a summary of my previous research experience and statement of my current research interest. So all the skills I wanted to learn, I put that on this stuff. So here's my uh, beautiful CV uh, from 2016, uh, summary of my things. The computer skill I had, I knew this was important for uh, her, her experience in my research. The more experience you get, the better your chances of getting into a lab. So I did that, uh, it was in Circus Array. I did that too. Um, and then uh, this is my major. And then this is like my statement of research. Uh, so you see here, like um, I was still doing the this uh, work at the Dr. Brothers Lab and then Dr. Wayne Sawson, it was just kind of finishing. And I said, um, I have developed a keen interest in brain computer interface technology. I will enjoy doing research in that uh, an area that is taking advantage of these tools for therapeutic purposes. In the long term, after my graduate study, I would like to work in improving neural prosthetic technology by combining my passion for neuroscience and computer science. Really cool stuff. Um, I'm motivated. I didn't end up doing this. I work in supply chain now. But yeah, this is definitely something I will I would like to do in the future still to this day. And then, yeah, this is my transcript. So, yeah, that's it. And after the first email, you usually know that it's going to work out or not. So she said, uh, thank you very much for your interest in my research. I'd be interested in discussing an undergrad project with you for this upcoming year. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, I'm happy to chat over Skype later this week. Let me know what worked best. And like, it's just a normal back and forth afterward. You have to kind of break the shyness of just putting your stuff uh, forward because no one will there's no one that will try to recruit you like if you haven't sent an email to a researcher that you admire uh, to work for them the chances that you're going to get into one of these labs is none they are looking for people they're very happy to have volunteers they're really happy to have smart folks that want to do stuff there's an infinite amount of stuff to do in all the lab i've seen and is usually the great labs are led by people that love to teach um so if you show this kind of spark uh, and like willingness to learn and to do stuff. Um, every, every, every researcher will like to have this type of people around. Now that you have received the response, it's time to meet the supervisor and check if you want to commit to the lab. A bit of preparation here during this stage goes a long way. Remember, you will interact with people um, at this lab for a long while. So a good first impression is important. So here's the general flow. First, you present yourself and your motivation. Then you ask question about the current lab priority and vision. Afterward, you present the skills you want to hone at the lab and ask if there is anything needed to do that will fit that skill set. Finally, you ask about the day-to-day -day at the lab and what are other people's project looking like. Remember here, this is important. The lab need to fit first and foremost the skills you want to learn and uh, the environment need to be safe for you to learn that skill. So you should not stress too much during the interview. Think about it more as you interviewing them than the opposite. Finally, once you accept a volunteer or internship role at lab, it's time to learn as much as possible and have fun. Remember why you got into the lab at the first place and make the most out of this learning opportunity. All the while following where your curiosity is leading you. You never know, you might make a discovery. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any question. I'm here to help. Have a great week everyone and see you in the next video.